Well, today we're carrying on with the trailer. Uh, we need to sort the brakes and bearings and things like that out. To get the drums off, you just pry these caps off and then you'll find a crown nut and that pin. So get the pin out, get the nut off and then pull the brake drum off. I usually leave the tires on, it gives you a bit more leverage to pull it off. This one runs freely, this one is actually binding here. Uh, but the brake cable is seized on this one. Alright, let's get that wheel off and have a look inside. Well, the rear one turned out to be a little bit of a disaster. There is absolutely no lining left on this one. A little bit left here. There's a spring in the drum. I don't know where it belongs to. Everything is full of cobwebs. And the drum itself looks not very nice. So we're going to machine that because uh, we can't leave it this way. It's, it's very uneven. So that needs some work. It's not just replacing the cable unfortunately. So we need a full brake kit. I think no one looked into those for a long time. Well, let's take the shit out here, put the wheel back on and do the other one and see how that looks like. Because this is <laughs> unbelievable. Well, we just found that the brake cables are not the ones which are which they are supposed to be so I'd l I checked the axle type and it's correct but the, but the brake cables look different so we need to sort that out as well uh, so we need a four sets of brake linings the spring set the hold downs were missing as well uh, so all the hardware set the adjuster moves, so that's at least reusable. And the drums are 200 millimeters in diameter. So I, I guess the other one doesn't look much better. So this is a chunk. It's just a pile of rust here. All right. Put that wheel back on and look into the other one. That's probably a bit harder to get off because it's uh, binding. Well, that's the front wheel. Same thing here. No, almost no lining left. A little bit. Uh, and the bearing is really rusty. And it's stuck on the shaft, so I need to get that off. It looks a little bit better. But it's, everything is frozen as well, so it doesn't really break. So that's going to be a new set of linings, hardware and a bearing, or two bearings. Smaller one here, bigger one here. Just need to check the size. So we got the bearing off. There is a lot of water in it. It's quite a bit rusty. And uh, the bearing is shot. It's brown, not from rust, it, it went hot. Uh, there's a lot of rust here as well. It's got massive pitting. Uh, the drum looks better than the other one. It's a bit smoother, but it needs machining as well. Uh, I was checking the diameter here. And that's a bit of a, an interesting one. It's imperial bearings. So that's the front inner is 0.75 inches and the rear one is 1.25 inches but the, the surface for the shaft seal is, doesn't make sense here, that's 42 millimeters. Uh, we we'll need to figure out what that is. I have that ring here. I need to just take a magnifying glass and figure out 
the spring is broken so that doesn't seal anymore uh, I need to see if I can read the writing here oh, I'm just gonna order a set of four uh, the front one looks a bit better but it's not very nice either so it doesn't make sense to keep it they're not very, they're not very expensive so we got the inner diameter so I need to figure out the outer diameters and put the wheel back so we can move it away and uh, order the bits and then we'll carry on doing the rest of it well the outer diameter on the inner one looks like two and a quarter inch 2.25 57 ish millimeters. Uh, let's check the outer one. So the outer one looks like 1 and 3 quarters, 1.75. Makes sense. Alright, so let's put it back together, order the bits, and then we'll come back. So that's front left. And believe it or not, there is a trace of lining left uh, all the springs are there they're not rusted away but we're gonna do all four of course but it doesn't look too bad except the bearing I think that shot because it looked like a lot of water on the drum doesn't look very nice either it's got a got a really bad wear pattern here. Yeah. That chester is rusted as well, so we're gonna soak that with WD-40 just to make everything nice and smooth and then we'll take that break out tomorrow. It's good if you got a four-wheel trailer you can take a wheel off and just park it. Alright. Well, and that's what we found in the right rear. No shoes, no adjuster, no springs, no nothing. The drum looks ugly, but the bearing looks good. The seal is gone, but apparently someone took it out for whatever reason. <laughs> That's interesting. The front one looked pretty good actually. Everything was moving, but apparently I haven't been brake shoes in for quite a while. So let's see if that moves. That's the reversing mechanism, and it doesn't move at all. That's solid here. So if you reverse it, that pulls, pushes it in and loosens the brake, but it's not going to move at all. So someone messed around with. Uh, there's some grease in it, so a few cobwebs, but apparently that's not been working for quite a while. So we need an adjuster um, and perhaps that hardware as well. I need to take it apart and see how it works. The spring is missing as well. Normally there's a spring here that's gone as well. So we need that as well. Okay. Always a surprise <laughs> if you buy something second hand. Great. At least the bearings are good. So, and that's the adjuster from the rear left. It was completely seized up in the hole here. I had a bit of fun to get that out. So, let's clean that. Probably shot blasted. And uh, just skim it a bit on the lathe. Well, our trailer brake parts arrived today. It was a bit of a journey to find the right parts because the drums and the brake shoes are actually Arco brakes, but the back plates, they don't look like Arco because that trumpet where the uh, cable goes is fixed. On the Arcos, it's detachable. So. I don't know if someone welded something on it, but 
that's what we have. <coughs> so what we got here is they don't they don't look very good either. We need to check how they fit into the brake cables and if there is enough clearance to pull it back into trumpets because they are smaller. So that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. They seem at least to fit to the brake cables here. That's good. Uh, doesn't come out, so if there is tension on it, it won't come out. I still have the feeling they're a bit long, but we will see that. What we also need to make is, we need to make a bushing for those cups here, because on mine, the diameter is about five millimeters smaller. So I just um, make some bushings which go into that. There is no brake cable to find which will fit my brake. There is no stamping on the old ones. I cannot, I cannot find what it is. It's not a knot brake. It's not a locket brake. I think the back plates are just something weird. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. At least those hooks fit. So that's another one solved. And uh, if you make this, and if you make this reducers here, which go into that, um, it should be alright. It still goes a lot over the um, over the trumpet. It's just the problem that my trumpets are welded, and the the ones I found there are two detachable metal shells, which you can take out, but apparently it's not the case. So God knows what it is. The axles are actually Alco axles, 1315 kilograms, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how old they are, no idea. The, the shoes look good, they, they appear to be original Alco, good price. Um, bought one of those because I was missing and uh, obviously they come with the springs. I think it was 30 something per set. That means for two uh, for two wheels. That's a good price. But I got two axles or four wheels. Everything a little bit more expensive on a four wheel trailer. All right, that's going to be fitted as soon as possible. <laughs>